How do Kingdompreneurs do business God's way? What does faith in business really look like? What strategies and mindsets are required to grow your business and fulfill your God-given purpose? Those are the questions this podcast will answer. My name is Jeff Elder, and welcome to Business God's Way. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Business God's Way. As always, I appreciate you listening in to these episodes. I hope you had a great Easter. I know I did. It was nice to hang out with friends on Sunday and celebrate the resurrection. I hope your Easter Sunday was amazing as well. It is awesome that we serve an amazing God and the reason that we have the life that we have and the salvation that we have is because of the resurrection. Amen. Without it, Christianity would not be Christianity. So I hope you enjoyed the day, whatever you ended up doing. I also enjoy spring. Uh, Here in Ohio, spring has sprung. (laughs) And it's been nice to be able to be outdoors a little bit more. And I also enjoy the fact that we get longer days and more sunlight. But that's enough (laughs) of that. And what I want to do today is I want to talk about the topic of shiny object syndrome. I was doing a training this week and somebody brought up a great question. The question was, how do I, how can I tell the difference between my next step or a shiny object? Really what, what she was asking was, how can I make sure that the steps that I believe I'm supposed to be taking right now are the right ones? And how do I know that it's not just shiny object syndrome? where I'm kind of chasing after all the things that we tend to chase after. And that led me to really do a lot of self-reflection on this topic of shiny object syndrome, because I'll be the first to admit that I struggle with shiny object syndrome. (laughs) I very easily can chase the rabbit down the rabbit hole. And this is something that I've been trying to work on. And I've been praying about it. And I've been asking the Lord to to reveal some things to me so that I can get a handle of this whole shiny object syndrome. Because... I believe that God has called me to do what he's called me to do. And every time I chase after a shiny object, well, it's distracting me from doing that. And I know that I'm not alone in this. And so what I want to do in today's episode is I want to talk about, first of all, why does shiny object syndrome happen? What causes it? And these are some things that I've been learning about it. And so I want to share that with you. Then I want to talk about some tips for how we can actually start to overcome shiny object syndrome. That's where we're going to head today. So the first thing I want to do is... I want to answer the question, what causes shiny object syndrome? Why do we, why do we deal with it as much as we do? You know, is there any underlining causes that make us chase after all the shiny objects? And this is like this is what the Lord has has kind of revealed to me about this topic. And I believe these three things 
as I think about it, I think those are absolutely true because I see this in my life. Whenever I start to chase after that shiny object, one of these three things, or sometimes it's all three, while usually the underlying reason for why I chase after these objects. The first one is clarity. The second one is confidence. The third one is just our capability to stay focused. Now, when I, when I was thinking about these things, I was like, yes, this is so true. You see, when I come to the table in my business and I am not clear on what it is I'm supposed to be doing, it's very hard for me to know what to say no to. Or even what I need to say yes to. And this may be true in your life too. And what I want you to do is if you struggle with shiny object syndrome and you find yourself chasing after everything except what you believe you've been called to do, I want you, I want to, I want you to ask yourself, do I have clarity? Do I know what I need to be doing in my business? Do I have a roadmap? of where I'm supposed to be going in my business? Do I have a vision? Do I have goals? Do I have clarity around what God wants? And if you don't have that clarity, then I'm gonna recommend that you take some time and figure that out. Figure out your goals, your vision, your mission, because these things is what will bring clarity. And as we begin to get more clarity in what we're supposed to be doing, that will begin to shut down the desire to chase after every shiny object that comes our way because we will then know what to say no to. It becomes obvious. In fact, when I do this, when I have clarity and I get tempted to chase after the shiny object, what I have discovered in my life is that all of the sudden I actually know, nope, I don't need to be chasing after that. And then at that point, what happens is I make the decision or the choice to either chase after it anyway, or to refocus my mind back to what needs to happen. So clarity, typically, in a lot of cases, is one of the reasons why we get into the trap of chasing after shiny objects. The second thing, confidence. <laughs> confidence. When we don't have confidence in what we're doing, we begin to doubt ourselves. We begin to wonder, am I actually able to do this? Can I really do this? And the moment that we start heading down the lack of confidence road, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if we don't come to the table in our business with confidence? We are going to seek every opportunity to hide from what we're supposed to be doing. And one of the ways that we hide is by chasing after all the shiny objects. Why? Because of confidence. It's an escape. It's an escape. So 
So what we need to do is we need to figure out how do we build confidence? How do we build confidence? And I want to share a story in my own life when it comes to confidence. And this kind of provides one of the answers. I mean, this topic alone on confidence could be an entirely, uh, an entire episode on it by itself. But I want to share an experience that I had when it comes to confidence. Last month, I, in the month of March, well, actually, let's back up. It was the month of February. I knew that I wanted to do a challenge. I wanted to do a 21-day challenge. I, I called it the Momentum Challenge. It was a lead generation challenge. And I struggled with following through on that. And it all was because of this confidence issue. I doubted myself. I, I wondered, does anybody even care? Do I have anything to add? Do I have any value to add? And my confidence level was very, very low. And it was very easy for me during that time of preparation to chase after the shiny objects. It was a distraction for me. It was a way for me to get out of it. Well, with the help of the Lord and with the help of some very good friends pushing me and keeping me accountable, I did the challenge. 21 days. It was the best thing I ever did. I finished it. I completed it. And I had a blast. It was one of the most fun things I've done in my business in a very long time. And I started to get feedback. People loved it. People were growing from it. People were getting breakthroughs in their business. And what started to happen was this sense of confidence started to come back. And so what I learned in that lesson, and this is a lesson for all of us, is the best way to boost confidence is to finish. Finish what you started. Put it out there. Ask the Lord to give you the confidence that you need to do it, and then do it and finish it. Because I promise you, the more you finish what you start, the more your confidence is going to grow. Now, what do you think happens when you have clarity? And when you have confidence around that clarity, it becomes a lot harder to fall into the shiny object trap. Now, the last thing is capability to focus on your strengths. You see, some of us, we are incapable of focusing. And focusing on the right things. That's the key here. The focus needs to be on our strengths. What are we good at? And how do we become more capable of being able to finish what we start? Well, again, it comes down to discipline. It comes down to purpose. It comes down to knowing what we're good at. Because what I have noticed in my own life is that it doesn't take a whole lot of work to do what I'm already good at. I am very capable, and you are very capable as well. But a lot of times, 
we try to do things outside of our wheelhouse where we are not capable. And that's when things fall apart. So I want you to imagine this. Or, or let, me, let me summarize this for you. If you struggle with shiny object syndrome, it is because you probably lack clarity in your business, which leads to a lack of confidence, which leads to you end up doing everything else except for what your strengths are and you believe that you have become incapable of doing it. You see how those things work together? Now imagine the reverse. Imagine that you come to the table with that stream clarity, with that stream confidence. You believe that you have the capability to do what you need to do because you are working within your strengths. Do you think you'll have time to chase after shiny objects? I think the answer is no. And so when I when I discovered these three things, it was like it was like an aha moment for me. Because I was finally able to pinpoint some of the root causes of my own shiny object syndrome. And this has been a huge blessing because when I start to drift, when I start to, sh to, to uh, chase after shiny objects, I now have something I can come back and anchor on. I'll ask myself, okay, okay, I just, I wanted to chase after this. Okay, am I clear on what I'm supposed to be doing? Okay, no, okay, how do I get clarity? Am, do, do I feel confident in what I'm supposed to do? No? Okay, so what do I need to do to, to get more confidence? Well, maybe I need to actually finish the thing that I started. And then when it comes to capability, I'm asking myself, okay, am I focusing on my strengths? Because if I'm not, then I need to readjust. So having those three, um, those three uh, places to hang my hat has really, really helped me to be able to come back <laughs> and ask myself the right questions, take a deep breath, pray to the Lord, ask him to refocus me and to bring to mind the areas where I might need more clarity, where I might need more confidence, and where I might need more capability to be able to focus on what matters most, to focus on my strengths. Now, what are some things that we can do to overcome shiny object syndrome? I wanna give you just a few ideas here. First thing we need to do is we need to stop taking on too many new projects. Because when we take on too much in our business, which is typically a signal of a lack of clarity, we tend to take on too much. And then we get overwhelmed. And when we are overwhelmed, it's very, very, very difficult to be confident in what we're doing and to feel capable in what we're doing. And this is one sh when shiny object syndrome can come in. And this is why I'm hitting so hard on the clarity part. Because when we have clarity in our business, we know what to say no to. So stop taking on too many projects. 
I have a client who, when they first came to me, they gave me this list of all the things that they were doing in their business. And at the same time, they had expressed how tired and overwhelmed and how burnt out they were. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, no wonder. You're trying to do too much because they didn't have clarity in their business. And they were burning out. And so what I did was we coached, I coached them through, okay, what can we eliminate? What, what's your vision for your business? What's your mission for your business? What do we need to say no to? And I'm thrilled with the results that this client is getting when it comes to clarity. They have dropped almost everything they were trying to do and now they are hyper-focused, hyper-productive, and they're getting stuff done. But it, it comes, it came out of having that clarity and confidence and the ability to work in their strengths. And that was what helped this business move forward. Now, I talked about this one before, but one of the things that we can do to help overcome shiny object syndrome is to actually finish what we start. Because the more we do that, the more we get into the practice of finishing what we started, that's when confidence begins to build. And when we start to get confidence, we start to believe in ourselves. We start to believe in our capabilities. We start to see our vision and our goals and purpose come to life. Every time you finish something that you start, it puts that shield up and prevents shiny object syndrome from getting in. And this is one that I'm working the hardest on because I struggle with finishing what I start. I really do. And so for me, this is the one that I've landed on. And I'm making a commitment to finish what I start. Another thing, comparison, being influenced by the results, and I'm using air quotes, that we see on social media. And then we start comparing ourselves. But here's the thing that you have to remember. On social media, we are only seeing the good parts. <laughs> We're not seeing the behind the scenes mess that is probably going on in these businesses. We all, because who, who posts the negative? We all want to post the positive. And that's what we all see. We see the positive. We see, oh, this person's doing this, and that person's doing this, and this person has a thousand followers, and this person has a hundred thousand. And we get into this trap of, of comparing ourselves with what we see other people doing on social media. And that is the quickest way to get us into shiny object syndrome because then we start going down these rabbit trails of, well, I gotta figure out what he's doing. I gotta figure out what they're doing. I gotta figure out what she's doing. What's her business like? What are they doing, right? Oh, we have to do that. We, we need to do this or that because we keep looking and we keep comparing ourselves. So we have to learn how to not be influenced by what we see on social media. And for some of that, for some of us, that might mean shutting down social media for a while. Now, I know for some of, some of us that's hard because social media, we rely on social media for our business. But we got to learn how to, how to uh, put up our guard and protect ourselves and our minds from heading down that comparison trap. Two more things. 
One other way is to set better goals. To set better goals. And to set better goals, they need to be specific. Right? They need to be specific. Here's an example. I could say that I want to lose, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Okay, is that a good goal? Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I qualified it by saying 20 pounds. But is it specific? No. Specific would put the goal this way. In the next 90 days, I'm going to lose 20 pounds by going to the gym from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. three times a week. See how specific that is? And the more specific we can be with our goals, the more clarity we're going to have. And now we have these goals written down as a guidepost for where we need to be heading so that anytime a shiny object appears, we can always go back to the goal and say, nope, that's not my goal. That's not going to help me achieve my goal. It's not going to help me focus on my goal. It's just going to distract me. So I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to give it to the Lord and I'm going to say, God, this is not for me right now. And you refocus back on your goals. Specific goals. All right, so set better goals. The last thing I want to talk about is accountability. Accountability. You need to have somebody in your life who you trust and who you've given permission to say the hard things. And you need to have an honest conversation with that person. And you need to let that person know, this is my vision. These are my goals. This is my purpose. And so based on my goals and purpose and vision, these are the steps I believe God is asking me to take. And so I'm giving you permission that if you see me doing anything that distracts me from this, I want you to call me out on it. Because when we have this type of accountability, and we are very honest with where we are in our business and where we're heading and we allow somebody into that. And we know that we're going to be called out if they see us doing something contrary to what we've told them that we want to be doing. And so this adds another layer of protection around shiny object syndrome. Right? So if I, if one of my shiny objects is Facebook and I've shared that, you know what? I don't need to be on Facebook as much as I am. And I go post something on Facebook and my accountability partner is on Facebook and they see that post, they can come back and say, Jeff, remember, is Facebook right now? helping you achieve your goal? Is it helping you achieve your purpose, your vision? And most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's not. And so just knowing that you're gonna have somebody keep you accountable helps keep you focused. And the more focused we become the more we are able to fight off in uh, 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 shiny object syndrome. <laughs> Forgot the name of it for a minute. And the reason I wanted to share this episode 
is, first of all, because I just wanted to let you guys know that I struggle with this too. I am nowhere from being perfect in saying that I never, I never deal with this. I'm not there. That would be an absolute lie if I told you that. But I am trying to do better. I am praying about it. I am studying the topic of shiny object syndrome. I'm learning about it. I'm learning about how to overcome it. And I'm trying really hard to, to overcome it. Because I don't want it to distract me from what God has called me to do. And I don't want it to distract you from what God has called you to do. And I wanted to encourage you with that. I wanted to remind you that you have been called. You have a purpose. Your business has a purpose. What God has for you is beyond anything you can think or imagine. And it's time that we as kingdompreneurs begin to overcome not just shiny object syndrome, but anything that distracts us from carrying out that call from God in our business. And my prayer for you is that this episode spoke to you, that it brought some understanding of maybe why you struggle with shiny object syndrome and has given you some things to think about and some, some tools to implement to help you overcome in your life and in, in, in your business. And what I want to do is if this episode has resonated with you, or you have some other ideas of how you've overcome shiny object syndrome, let me know, head over to, uh, head over to Instagram and you can find me over there at J elder a and message me. Let me know, Jeff, I resonate with this. Yes, these are some things that I've done in my life that have helped me. Because, you guys, I'm not an expert in this at all. I'm just sharing what I've learned so far. And this, this isn't the um, encyclopedia, if you will, of shiny object syndrome. I know there's probably a lot more to it than I talked about or had the time to talk about today. So let me know what some of those things are. And I hope this was helpful. I hope this episode was helpful to you. And by the way, if you have not left a review or a rating for this podcast over on Apple Podcast, I'm going to invite you to do so because that's the best way to spread the word about this podcast. And if this podcast has helped you in any way, I'm going to invite you to invite other kingdompreneurs who need to hear what this podcast has to offer. And so I would greatly appreciate it, and it would mean a lot to me if you would go over and do that. That is what I have for you guys today. And as I say every week, go out there and continue to do business God's way. I love you guys. I am praying for you guys. And I'm praying that together we can overcome shiny object syndrome so that we can do what God's called us to do without being distracted. All right, guys, that's it. I will talk to you guys next week.